Well, how's it going, folks? Out in the woods. I'm out with Mac Tightwad. We've come over to uh, we've come over to uh, Covert Woods. Uh, not Covert. Spooky woods. Spooky woods today. So it's a new one for me. A bit breezy, but it's uh, for a change. It's actually nice and it's dry, and the sun is shining and the sky is bright blue sky. So we'll we'll we'll. we'll I think we've both been in like, cabin fever, stir crazy, but we're out, out. We don't care we're what we're out, out. No, we're, we're out, out. So, um, so yeah. So, uh, going to practice a few bits of skills and stuff today. Just come out for a day visit. Um, so yeah, we'll come back to you in a little while, folks. All right, stay tuned. I should have pulled it out the other way actually. So I've got my uh, bow line in here. And literally what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna attach it to, to the tree. It's just basically for my for my rucksack. So I've just pulled a trailing in through. I got this idea off of watching uh, Corporal's Corner and uh, the grey bearded Green Beret. I believe they're instru they're, they're, they're instructors with Mr. Canterbury. So uh, I see what you do is that okay so you make a loop and then fold that over and bring that through and then what you do then is just put your stick through and then pull it tight and then what happens is you can then attach your let's get that balanced out a bit more oh it's a little bit unequal there Actually, I've, I've done know what I've done now, I've buggered it up, I think. No, it's there. It's alright. Right. Might take two, alright, so like that, like that. So you get your loop, then that goes over the top there, like so. And it slip here. So it's kind of like so it's a, a marlin spike hitch. And then they uh, like that. What I can do then is obviously hoist my uh, my rucksack over the straps over the top and then hang it up so it's off the floor. So there it is. So it's basically just like a marlin spike hitch, and it's enough to sort of keep the rucksack off the floor if you don't want to get it wet. Excellent. Right, folks. Some of you people have been asking about this um, this uh, quick dispatch ridge line. And uh, it's brilliant. It's not my idea. I basically got it off someone else. Dave Canterbury, I think, was doing it, and you know all these instructors. And I think it's such a great way to sort of, uh, as I say, deploy a ridge line. And um, first thing you need to do is obviously tie a bow line into the end of your paracord. Now I've got about 25 foot of paracord here. Um, they recommend you know 25 to 50 foot, but uh, you know that's enough for me. And then obviously you've got your prussic loops on there um, for attaching your tarp and such like. Now I've got an extra one in there as well and I basically use that just as an accessory call just to put a torch on it or something like that. And then it basically is a matter of just pulling out a few, oh, what's going on there? Just to pull out a few links of the, uh, of the dispatch lot. I think I've got that quite tight actually. That's better. And, um, so yeah, and then all you need to do is just pull your prussic loops down a slight bit, and then you can do it one or two ways with your bow line. All right, what you can do with the bow line is obviously wrap it around the tree, okay, and then you can create this marlin spike hitch where you can either, if you're to do the spike, you can actually put a stick in there, which is what we'll do for demonstration purposes. All right, or you can obviously pay out your pay out the end of the paracord. And then what happens is, when you're finished, if you obviously want to, you know, get away quickly, then all you need to do is just pull it out, and it's freed off that that end of the line. So it's quite a good, uh, quite a good one to show, I think. So I'll show you again. So you've got a bow line. Just pull it through to make a, a slip loop, as it were, and then just pull it through. 
against the tree. Yeah, it's going to stay anyway. It's not coming out. All right, and then we're going to pay it across the other side. Okay, to this tree. I'm having it sort of just over, just below my shoulder. And then what we're going to do now, the rest of my cord, we're going to make a trucker's itch. Now, I'm, 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 I've always been under the impression of doing a... Um, of a a taut line hitch but of late I'm going quite um, accustomed to this um, trucker's hitch and same again with the trucker's hitch it's basically just a matter of this like that and then pulling a loop through okay and then your cord goes through there last bit of your trailing cord goes through the loop okay obviously pulling it tight to take up the tension of your ridge line all right pull that tight and then just pinching it here wrapping it through once or twice and then creating your loop and then what you can do where that oh where that I'll tell you what, I'm going to take my gloves off because this is, I'm, I'm sort of making it a bit awkward, I'm making it look a bit khaki using my gloves, I think. So, uh, but I'll keep that in. There's nothing wrong with that in case you make a mistake yourself. But notice there, it hasn't slipped that much, as much as I wanted it to, but if we just pull on that line there, so we make it nice and tight. Okay, we've still got the loop there. All right, so we then pinch it. Okay, wrap that over. And then literally just pass that through there like so. Oh, it's like I'm doing a brass strap. Okay, and, and there you go. And then what I can do as well, I mean obviously that's quite tight. And then another thing you can do is either put a, a, a stick through there, okay, and pull it up tight, or to kind of take up your paracord and put that through there as well and it kind of acts as a as a stop as a stop knot all right so i think that's sort of a that's it right and then obviously there's your prussic loop i've used the um using the uh good old um, bank line so you take about a foot or so of uh of bank line or paracord whatever you want to use okay you can either put an overhand knot in it or do a fisherman's knot and then the idea is is that you place your loop over the top there okay and then the knot comes through goes over once goes over a second time you can do it three times it's almost like i'm going to break into a commodore's record now and then on the third time just loop it through there And it's basically, it kind of originates from a sort of like a climbing knot that was used for ascending ropes. Because obviously when you put tension on it, it bites into the, bites into the, into the cord or the other rope. Um, and obviously stops it from, you know, under stress, it doesn't move. But the great thing about it, of obviously using it with our tarps and stuff like that, is that we can obviously, it slides up and down when you release the tension on it. So as I say, I've got one there. I've got one on it there as well, okay, and then I've obviously got this big longer one in the middle, a bit of paracord, and that really is on there, just to uh, to attack, like to have an accessory cord. So let's do it again, eh? So we've got like a slight, this one's probably a slightly longer with, par with the uh, length of paracord. Okay, so it goes over once, through there, goes over again, twice. Three times a lady. Yeah, do you like that? And then, uh, and then pass your, pass your trailing in through, just to keep it all nice and tidy. And there's your prussic loop. All right, your prussic loops. Okay. So we've got a marlin spy hitch at this end. The prussic loops. And in this end, I've got a the taut line hitch, uh, the trucker's hitch. Sorry. And then the uh, and then obviously I've got, I've just put a, a, a stick through there, a wooden stake, 
or your tent peg and then or even what you can use is your uh, you can even hang up your power cord the strands your bridge line or whatever it is you're using your choice for obviously putting up your ridge line and then um, what you can do if you didn't want to use a stick you could obviously just poke that in there and, and, and bring it through all right There's the old bush bar. I've left the heli contacts at home. And I've brought out the old bush bar. So now I've got a spare rapid ridge line that goes with this tarp. But I'm going to keep this one to the side because Mac wants to see how it's done. So uh, I'm going to set up the OEX tarp. Still liking this tarp. Um, but as you've seen in the last few videos, obviously trying to, you know, going down my desmuck route, I'm obviously trying to keep things quite light. what I've gone here really because they're only out for the day and um, the wind is blowing obviously this way so I've rigged up the shelter as more of a more of a just of a wind barrier really so uh, literally what I've done because I've obviously got two trees here that are quite close that you know um, I won't be able to I'll, I'll be able to do it in an A-frame configuration but nothing if I wanted to have it as a you know like a with an extended pouch and because we're only here for the day anyway as I say what I've done is I've just made it into a I've literally just folded the halfway bit back in on itself and pegged it out on the inside and it's enough just to keep a bit of wind off us um, I was going to have a fire but having now been to this woodland um, obviously there's a lot of pine here and the ground is very soft um, so I think just general protocol really you know I don't really want to have a, have a fire and then um, you know for a ground fire to, uh, to sort of occur in here so I'll just be you know in all the in all the manner of things trying to extinguish your fire and all the rest of it you know it's good protocol really um, so I'll be using my uh, my pathfinder sort of stove for doing all my cooking today going on there.
There's hardly any fuel in that burner now, so I'm just going to let it burn out. What I like about this bacon is straight away when you put it in the pan you start to smell it, you get that bacon smell. Bacon as well. I've not had to. I've had to add some oil to it because uh, it doesn't kick out any oil or water or anything at all. You know, it's really good bacon. I really like it. So pay a little bit for it, but you know, it's worth it sometimes.
GoPro stop recording. GoPro stop recording. <laughs> GoPro stop recording. Snake, you get in ya, hey? Go on, move. Go on. Right, yeah. well, so what I'm going to do now? I'm going to leave that oil in now, and then in a little while. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make some, uh, heat the oil up, put some pop popcorn seeds in there and uh, have a little bit of popcorn. In my last video, when I was out camping and I was doing a bit of spoon carving and you know I wanted to make uh, another canoe spoon and unfortunately that the, the stop cuts I didn't put in there right and obviously it split through the wood and in the meantime I was making my second spoon which I kind of called it a canoe paddle um, and what I recently did was once I'd finished it and I, um, I actually done a little bit of calligraphy on it uh, pyrography even and um, I burnt very simple kind of you know forest tree line into the handle which I was quite pleased with nothing you know nothing too uh, extravagant but it's a uh, it's a spoon that's now going to get used um, simply because it's nice and compact one that I can slip in my pocket I'll put in my brew kit so uh, this was made out of a piece of birch and uh, yeah, nothing too shapely about it but it works it's practical fits all right in my mouth <laughs> and obviously it's got this forest tree line on it so it makes it a little bit more personal for me all right push deep for some reason we can never have enough spoons can we cutlery and cooking pots and such like as bushcrafters and outdoors people and um, there's one of my other spoons but obviously now I'm going to use this one to stain it up a little bit I've obviously put a coating of oil on it but um, I'm going to use this one as more uh, for brewing up and stuff.
little spur in those folks. Folks, so I made myself a buck saw. Um, used a bit of hazel. Um, obviously got the bit, of the horizontal bit that goes across. I maybe could have made the notches slightly bigger, um, but it's come out all right. I'm quite pleased with that. So we'll put it to the test now and give it a, give it a, a use. We'll use it. See what it's like. Hopefully what that's going to do is just basically going to stop the blade from, from obviously split, further splitting the, the wood. So I'll do the same with the other, with the other one now, just to prevent that one from splitting up any further as well. running low on meths because I thought we were going to covert spot today so um, because of that normally I have a fire over there but because of the slight issue with the pine and stuff like that that's here what I've done is I've used three green sticks of hazel to basically put my um, my pathfinder um, windshield there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some debris in there to obviously light it so I can then heat up the pan to make some popcorn for lunch. Right, so what I've got is uh, in that bag is uh, when I was mucking around the other week making matches and stuff like that. Right, so basically what I've done there is this is one of those makeup heads, you know, that the Doris's used to take their makeup off and all that. And um, what I've done was I literally brushed some melted wax on one side, on the other, this is still quite damp and it's basically um, liquid paraffin. So again, it, it'll burn the liquid paraffin and then obviously it's, it'll burn the, the wax a hell of a lot longer so it'll have a nice burning time on it. Oh yeah. Oh, that's 
So yeah, there we go. Stick that in there. And I don't want nothing too ferocious because it's just enough for me to to hit it out of the pan. But as you can see, that's burning. That will burn for quite a while, obviously because it's got the the um, the paraffin, the liquid paraffin, but also it's got the uh, the wax on it as well. smell of pine resin coming off those bits of fallen pine that I picked up from the floor nice they're quite dry actually so what I'm gonna do while the, the oil's heating up got me a little bag of pumpkin uh, the popcorn seed so I'm just going to drop a couple in there and that'll give me an indicator that when the oil's hot when they start to pop and form into the popcorn and then I'll add the uh, I'll add a, a handful for me and Mac to have a snack on and my wife recently purchased for me I didn't even ask for them but she's purchased me these three little pots and um, machined quite obviously quite well with a screw lid and they're obviously quite handy for condiments and such like and, uh, and in this one for example I've got caramel salt that I'm going to sprinkle on the popcorn when it's done give it that sweet salty caramel taste and uh, yeah I mean I think I'll once they go in my kit I'll take the little split rings off I probably won't have them on there I'll probably put a tiny piece of cold uh, they came in a pack of pack of three and, uh, and I'm just having a go at these right now So the oil's just starting to warm up now. There's one bit of popcorn just popped. So I'd be rude not to. Oh. <laughs> so the oil's heating up now. Hey. <laughs> So let's have a look. Yeah, look at that. There we go. Good popcorn. Nice and hot. And what I've got to do, just to finalise, I've got some of this salty caramel flavouring. Give that a sprinkle. I didn't bring any butter with me this time. That'll do. We'll give it a little bit of a shake up and I'll go and share it out with his nibs. I think he's actually got his head down, but we'll see. I'll put some salty caramel in it as well. So oh, 
I've mixed it up, see what you think. Yeah. You'd pay about 20 quid for that in the cinema, wouldn't you? You would, you would sir, <laughs> yeah. And, and you'd have to steal a bag of rebels because yeah. you couldn't afford them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very nice, sir. I'm going to put that... Well, Rick? Yeah, go on, steal that there, sort of thing. Very nice, sir. That's all right, isn't it? That's what that. It's like salty. It's like salty, mate, but you know, like cooked on a fire taste. Yeah. You, you don't get that. It was just cooked on a fire, mate. Well, a friend of mine, she bought me some, um, um, like different uh, popcorn um, sort of flavourings. Oh, right. So I literally just grabbed one this morning, it was salty caramel. And, um, Very nice. It ain't bad at all, is it? Mr. Baldick, like that. It's just, well, I like that then. You don't like Mr. Baldick? Yeah, you like right. that? Right. Yeah, he likes not it. better than bacon, mate. But I like bacon. <laughs> <Yeah>. Baldick. <coughs> but I cooked it in the oil that was used for the bacon this morning. That's what I'm getting on as well, mate, yeah. That. Well, good, boy. Get one of them, boy. There you go. Oh, I like them, Dad. Oh, Lovely. Pretty, huh? Here on my, uh, my bottle, I've got one of the Des Catties stickers. Hey. Next to the Global Symposium and the Bushcraft Journal sticker. So yeah, they'll be uh, they'll be out soon. Just waiting on the badges, the woven badges, and then uh, uh, I'll let people know if they're interested in my merch. <laughs> and as you can see, well, I've got the hazel down on the base. It hasn't leaked through onto the floor, onto the you know onto the floor, onto the forest floor, the woodland floor. So that's handy. So I'm still sort of managing to keep hold of some of my mess and just burn some natural materials, i.e. wood. There's the last of the popcorn. A few seeds in the bottom. Does anyone want a bit? Yeah, go on, try a bit. Mm -hmm. Really nice. Nice and simple. You'd often carry all. So just a little bag of... Um, you ain't even got to carry a whole bag of you. Just carry sort of like enough just to sort of fill the bottom of your pan and it's a nice little snack to have nice for out and about right folks and as you know i'm a big follower of dave fryer's kit um, again i'll put a link in the description if you want to go and have a look at his gear but this is the uh, frying pan cover that he does and uh, it, it, you know it has it's all my different frying pans that i've got and recently obviously i've got the pathfinder one and it fits in there quite nice Zips up quite well. Obviously, don't get all the carbon and all that sort of stuff over your kit. And uh, yeah, it's a nice bit of kit, nice and composite. You know, just to keep your stuff tidy in the way. All right. I'm not sure how much they retail for, but you can go and check them out on his Etsy on his Etsy uh, store. I'll put a link in the um, description. Please have a look at it and go over and have a look. And uh, not only that, not only these patches. You see me using a lot of patches through my videos if you follow them quite regularly and um, all good kit all right so that's these uh, that's his frying pan pouch now and as you can see now move that out of the way so that worked so like the flame was just on the on the actual green sticks nothing's gone through onto the ground there so that was worth doing Save me a little bit of uh, fuel to be able to get a brew on.
bought the charcoal off tin out today to make some charcoal off, but I didn't get round to it, but I'm not that fussed. I'll do it another time. I'll push the prussic nuts and all that up to the end where the bowline is put that through your middle finger and then obviously hank it up as normal oh, one of my prussic loops has got caught within the hank no problem 
and then when you get to about three or four feet from the end just hold that in place and then just coil it around now keep coiling it around and then when you get near the end you can either do a clovich or I do I just do like a slip loop literally I just leave my finger my index finger in now just the tip of it and then pull it through and then that goes in my rucksack at the top to be used for next time all right and then what I'll do with this pouch basically I'll put my uh, my power bank in there my little wallet house keys stuff like that that obviously I don't want to lose and then that just goes in there zips away all nice and tidy together also I put my car keys in there as well but I've just taken them out and then that obviously goes inside the morrow sack. And there's still tons of room in there. But obviously I'm just bringing this out for the day. <clears throat> So there it is folks, hope you enjoyed that video. A few bits going on now. A little mishap with a buck saw, but I've got it going in the end. Would I keep making one? No, I wouldn't. I've got a Laplander, or I use a Silky. But it's still a nice little skill to learn. Muck around, doing a bit of camp craft or craft or whatever. Um, but I wouldn't really carry a blade with me, a spare saw blade. And if I would, I'd probably carry a slightly smaller length one. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Probably the best day we've had in the UK for, for about a week or so, isn't it? I, I think, you know, you know this, this side of Christmas. <laughs> yeah. It's still been a bit blowy. But, um, yeah, so it's been a lot, obviously, a bit drier today. You know, we've had blue skies, a bit windy, still a bit cold. But kind of, that's how I like it. And you are, I think this is camping weather now. I'd love to be camping out tonight. Um, so, uh, I'd like to thank Mac Tightwad for inviting us along. Oh, thank you very much, you buddy. Much, and, um, we're both as mad as each other. Really. Well, that's it, mate. That's it. That's it. You know what I mean? So we just have the crack and all the rest of it. Um, so thanks for watching, folks. Um, while I remember, um, I've had the stickers done. I've had two lots of stickers. Um, I'm just waiting for the foot. I've just paid for a lot of embroidered badges, so they'll be in soon. I'll um, let people know. I'll probably put an alert on on the um, on Instagram. And I might even do just a little video just for, for my subscribers and that if people are interested in maybe purchasing one of my badges if they want to sort of get me out there a little bit more that'd be fantastic you know I always appreciate your uh, your feedback and your support you know I'm so really humbly grateful for it really um, also check out the podcast I've had a podcast now for a little while um, so I'm getting a little bit of feedback from people now emailing me saying that they're enjoying it and all the rest of it You know, it's basically just me either on my own babbling on or I'm out with um, Barney, Chris, John or whoever um, I do want to do some future ones where I have some guests on, you know, people that I just know And um, just put them out there as well, just sit down have a one-to-one -one And just have a guess about the outdoors, nature, bushcraft and anything really like that so um, that's about it really all right so um, i can be reached you can, you can obviously check me out on instagram i am on facebook every now and again but Insta instagram is probably your best one you can obviously email me um if you so wish do check out the podcast keep the subscribers coming please hit the like button if you haven't already done so and subscribe and um that's it folks all right so des is signing out i'll see you on the flip side take care and stay safe laters <laughs>